Now let's add a property, a style block for the body. And again, it's referring to this element, the HTML element body, another big one. So the selector will be body, and then we'll do the block. And the first property that we're gonna do is color. Now this one sets the text color. So background sets the color of the background. When you use the color property, it sets the color of the text. And this time let's use an RGB version. And how much red do we want? We're going to put 91 red. We'll put 91 green and 91 blue. All right now when you put all the same colors, you get a gray. See there, it shows you kind of what it is. It's a gray uh, until you get all the way to where they're, when you go so low, they're all zeros, you get black. When you go all high, where they're all 255, you get white. So right, yeah, and you get variations of gray all the way through when it's all the same colors, all the same numbers in the RGB. And there we see that the text is a gray, right? It's no, it used to be black and now it's gray. Now, how is inheritance working with the color property? Because we see that it was set on body, but notice the color of the text changed on paragraphs, right? And on this list. So let's see how inheritance is working on this property. So again, we can go back and find the color property. And if we scroll down to the definition and usage, it doesn't have a default value, and yes, it is inherited. So when that property is set on an ancestor, in this case body, it applies to all of its descendants, including the paragraph and the list. Now, why did the navigation list not pick up that color? And so here we're looking at really at details. So if we go back to the page, we see that this navigation list here, didn't, this unordered list did pick up the color, but this one did not. Let's go ahead and use our developer tool to understand what's happening here. So if we go to that element, we'll go within the nav and we'll look at the UL. And in fact, this one goes deeper. And so uh, all the way to the A. And if we go to the A, what we find out is that the user agent has set the color for that. So here, this shows us that a style rule, the one on the body, is not being applied. And that's what that strike through shows us. It shows us that in this tsstyles.css file, color has been set on body, but it's been overridden somehow. And so that line demonstrates that that's what's happening. And if we go up here to the user agent style on the A tag, the color's being set there to some value called WebKit hyphen link. Even though this is done by the browser style sheet, which has lower precedence, because the selector is more specific, right? An A link is more specific than a body, right? It overrides it, so it has precedence. And here we get how detailed that, um, the precedence for CSS is it's very well defined, but it's very detailed and you understand it. So these ones are actually the color of these um, of this list is based on the A link. So the A links have this color that's specified, but all the others that don't have one added by another property by another style rule are it's no longer applying. So if we go if we go to the paragraph, so if we go down to a paragraph. we see that that paragraph, the color here is being is overriding this user agent color that set it on the HTML. The body's both more specific and is a higher precedence style sheet. And so the color stays and, and that property stays. And so we see here inheritance is working on that, on that paragraph. And just like inheritance was working on the A tag too, but it was being overridden by a more specific style rule. Let's add a background color on this one too. So we'll do background color. And this one, let's use uh, one of the words, one of the color words. So we'll use ivory and let's see what happens when we do that. 
And there we have an ivory background. We have that gray text in the body. And now you see the difference between the body and the HTML and that they take up different, different spaces in the web page.